Amen, Amen folks. Amen. 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 Hello. Amen. Don't mind me. I'm just a pastor here. Uh, good to see y'all tonight. Everybody well? Yes, sir. Blessed? Amen. Amen. God been good to us, haven't you? Yes. Well, we get ready to, uh, if Steve ever finds his seat, we'll... I, I, I shouldn't have said anything, you was talking to your mom. She was talking to me. I was there with her. We get ready to uh, open up in prayer tonight. Uh, I hope everybody got the email that I sent out about Doris Wilkins. Uh, they uh, called her and scheduled her surgery for October the 13th. Amen. Hey, anyway, Jerry, that's right. I forget you couldn't get the email. Let me, let me just tell you, I, I sent the email out for those of you who may have not got it or, uh, or read it. Uh, she was having an extremely bad day and uh, a lot of pain and she said she was praying and said she was just crying out to God, God, you got to do something. I need some help. And she said as soon as she got, just as soon as she got through praying, the phone rang. And they said, Ms. Wilkins, we want you to know we've scheduled your surgery. Amen. So she was, she called me, she was, she said, I, I was ready to shout. So that's good. That's good. So y'all remember her, October the 13th? Uh, just pray that God would keep her safe and uh, get her ready for that and, and that everything would go smoothly there. She has really suffered over the last months. So uh, keep her in prayer. If you will, continue to remember the Edwards family. Uh, a little bit of positive news about them today, so praise the Lord for that. But both of them are still in the hospital. And so uh, remember them, if you will. Especially their son, because he's autistic and mm -hmm. having him confined to the machines, but they did say that his kidneys were starting to work on their Good. own, so that's a positive. Yes, amen, amen. Remember the Pew family too, Matt and Brittany and the, and the children. Uh, I think, I know Matt's got it, and Colton. Lisa's got it. Kate. Kate. Thank you, brother. Matt, Kate, and yeah. Brittany, and then Lisa. Uh, all those are tasting <laughs> positive, and so uh, Matt said that he was feeling some better today, and, and I think they're all on the on the way up, so praise the Lord for that. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. The little four-year-old girl, Whitney, yes. yes. um, she had her surgery this morning. It was extensive. No one had had any results or any work done. All right. Continue to remember that little four-year-old that had uh, brain surgery, I guess it yeah. was, right this morning. So her name's Whitney. So remember her. And Jimmy? Then, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I have a second one. Yeah. And it, um, Amanda Pinoy mm -hmm. and her baby, Amanda Matt and the baby, um, complications, but should be birthed soon. Oh, really? Okay. But just pray for there are some issues okay. that they're concerned about. All right. Remember uh, Matt and Amanda and the baby that's on the way. So remember them in prayer. Jimmy? I I've I, I not heard anything. Penny, have you heard anything of Janie on run? Oh, yeah. I just asked him a few minutes. He's doing okay. Yeah, he's home. Good. Um, He's on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's doing. They didn't do the one procedure, but they did the other, the shocking him, and uh, it didn't go in to rhythm, but they waited a little while, and it did, and so now they're just kind of waiting to see if it stays there. Okay. But, uh, so, but everything went fine. Everything went good, keeping him in prayer. Jane? I just want to give you a little funny update for Doris. Mm -hmm. After you sent the email out yesterday, I called her this afternoon. I did not get an answer. So I called her this afternoon, and she answered the phone. I said, well, I'm calling you in regards to the email that we got from, you know, Steve, and I said, praise the Lord. She said, yes. I said, well, I called you yesterday afternoon, you know, to want to talk to you. I said, I thought maybe you might just been up and down the hall because you're so happy that you <laughs> prayer. She said, no. No. <laughs> Soon, hopefully. Yeah. Hey, man. Hey, man. I guess if she had, uh, if I had been there, she might have maybe hit me up. Yeah, she would hit you. Now she's sick, maybe sick the dog. Right. Joy. Yeah, still remember Charles, but he is walking now over 300. Yeah, I saw that on the chart. That's good. Yeah, and um, he's been coming outside, getting some fresh air. Good. Good. He's not quite there yet, but he's doing real good. And I did see Doris today because I went to pick her dogs up and bring them to the back. And she's in a lot, she's in pain, but she's in a lot better mood. 
Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yeah, that's a that's a weight off of her right there. Praise the Lord. She said when we saw her the other day that she really misses everybody. She must have been in church. Yeah. Sissy. Um, I have a new co-worker, and um, she's a Mexican. She's mm -hmm. only twenty, but I've been trying to witness to her, and um, she has a Pentecostal background instead of Catholic, but um, mm -hmm. she's very receptive. Uh, I did ask her if she knew if she died today she would go to heaven, and she said she wasn't sure. So I've been sharing as much as I can with her, and um, uh, so I just want to pray for her salvation and pray for me that I'll have the right words that she needs to hear. Amen. 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 <coughs> Your uh, brother and sister in law and the baby, everything? All they're good, yeah. Good. He looks just like me. Go ahead. 
Concerns tonight, and so I invite you to come. Let's cast these cares upon the Lord tonight. thank you for this day that you've given to us. We thank you for another opportunity to be able to come and gather together in your house tonight, and, uh, Lord, to worship you and, and to learn more about you, to be able to gather around the Word of God. And Father, we thank you for the privilege that we have uh, to be able to humble our hearts at the throne of grace and come before you as a needy people tonight, Lord. We, uh, we have many needs and many concerns and cares, and, and Father, we do... <laughs> Uh, know tonight that you know all about them. Uh, but Father, we are told in your word to call upon you. We are told to uh, come boldly before your throne if that's where we can find the mercy and the grace to help in the time of need. And so God, we worship you tonight. We praise you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for the mercy that you show to us, the grace that you pour out upon us. We thank you that by grace, through faith, through your son Jesus Christ tonight, we can be born again. We can uh, have our sins washed and, and, and forgiven. And so, Father, we come with hearts that are filled with praise and thanksgiving for you and for our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the Holy Spirit tonight that dwells within the heart of every believer, that woos every heart of the lost. And, God, we just thank you so much tonight that uh, uh, you are patient, that you are merciful, and uh, you are a loving God. In spite of who we are, you love us. And so, God, we just give you praise tonight. Father, as we come before the throne of grace, we want to cast all of these cares upon you tonight, asking that you'd be with all those that are suffering, all those that are sick, those that are in the hospitals. Father, there's so many that are dealing with COVID, and uh, God, there's, there's cancers, there's surgeries that people are facing or recovering from. We know tonight that you are the great physician. We know that you can heal all manner of sickness and disease. And so, Lord, as we come before you tonight and bring these... Uh, people to you, these circumstances and these situations. God, we know tonight that just a touch of the Master's hand, uh, Lord, can heal, uh, can restore, can strengthen, uh, can give victory, can set the captives free. And so, Lord, we, uh, we do just that tonight. We come and we unload on you tonight in faith, knowing that you're able to not only hear prayers, but answer prayers. And so, God, we give you praise for that. Father, we pray for Ricky and Tammy tonight, and we can just hear the uh, the burden upon their heart, the pressure that they're feeling, God, from all the situations in their family, their children. And so, God, we just ask that you would minister there. Uh, Lord, we pray that you get those children help. Uh, Lord, they, uh, they need you. They need to be set free from those addictions. And 
So, Father, we ask that you would work. Uh, we, we don't put our trust in men or put our trust in programs, but, God, if that's what you're going to use to get them free, then so be it. We just trust that you'll work in a very powerful way in their life. God, just bring comfort and peace to Ricky and Tammy. Minister to them in a special way. Uh, God, again, we just ask that you'd be with all these needs tonight. Now, Father, we ask that you prepare our hearts. We know that you have something for us from your word tonight. And so, God, I pray that our hearts would be open, receptive, and, uh, Lord, that your word would go forth and accomplish what is pleasing to you tonight. We love you and we praise you. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Let's get our hymn books tonight. Left it up with 492. 492. Let's stand and please stand. Sunday evenings at 6 o'clock with Brother Glenn, yes. and also uh, Discover Hope class on Sunday mornings at 945. So, uh, got any questions about that, you can see Glenn. The, uh, we're not having an official business meeting tonight, but there's information back there on the little table as you were coming in. If you didn't pick it up, you can get one on the way out. Uh, let's see, the ministry ballots, uh, one ballot per person. <laughs> Per member. <laughs> Picture ID required. Amen. They need to be in by the 17th. The box is out there on the table in the foyer, so go ahead and get those turned in. Don't wait till the last minute. You'll forget it. And everything will already be tallied up, and your vote won't count. <laughs> ISI Bible Institute, Tuesday nights. We're uh, only a couple weeks in. It's not too late for you to be a part of that. You can come. It's at 6.55 on Tuesday nights. We're having some good classes, good participation. Got a good-sized class this time. So uh, you can come and be a part of that. Anything else need to be announced? All right. How's that elbow? Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's good. Okay, good. Miss Penny? Uh, yes. 
We need to get to work on our shoe boxes. Okay. We need to get, you know, we're bad to wait till that last minute. So go ahead and start making your shoe boxes, getting it together. The ladies are going to be uh, putting shoe boxes together. So any extra stuff you got, just bring in and we'll help that. But uh, we got to get to work. We need to uh, send a lot of little missionaries out. There you go. So we need to, to be working on them. Uh, also, I wanted to mention on the... Uh, Ballots. Yes. <laughs> I told Steve what a problem it is and what a wonderful problem it is mm -hmm. that every name on there, I was looking at them and I'm like, I want to vote a couple times because <laughs> I want to vote for every one of them. It's <laughs> nice to belong <laughs> 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 nice to, to a church that we have such good people who are willing to uh, be used by God. I agree with you. Amen. Amen. Absolute confidence in that ballot. Anybody yes. you pick on there will be, I know you're going to be able to use it. Hilda? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir? Um, I don't know if people know the uh, little auction that Brittany had. She yes. Ran, she ran yeah. for a thousand, I don't know if you heard. Yeah, about $1,600 is what I heard Sunday. Yeah, amen. That's great. And all that for, for OCC. So praise the Lord for that. There's mustard on yeah, it's muscadines. Who brought in the muscadines tonight? Oh, yeah. Hilda. I'm doing it to make money for the shoe boxes. I'm going to fill them shoe boxes up. Well, there you go. I'm going to share them out from Mr. Wainfield's garden here from Neil's garden. Okay. Oh. Amen. Right. Amen. So you're selling them? Well, I'm just Donate. for donations. Donations. Okay. Amen. Donation. I didn't say how much. Just okay. wherever you feel Amen. good. Okay. Good. Good. Raising money for OCC. That's good. Amen. Anything else? Alright, let's worship the Lord with our giving. You know what this offering is? Camp meeting. Oh, camp meeting was good. Amen. I'm going to tell you. You know, you think about it, you say, extending the camp meeting, and, and we, don't, we don't even realize it, but I mean, it went two more weeks, uh, Monday and Tuesday each week after the camp meeting. Kenny and Deborah were with us, and man, the teaching was rich. If you didn't get a chance to come, you need to go on YouTube or Facebook, whichever one you can get, and you need to watch every one of those morning services because I'm going to tell you right now, it'll be a, it's one of the best ways, this might be the best way that you can redeem an hour and a half is going on there and watching those services. Boy, it was rich. Man, it was good. Can I ask you the handouts he gave? Uh, yes. Yeah, we got some of those handouts. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't, where are they? They're in the printing room back there. We can make copies of them. They're probably in the dumpster by now, but anyway, we'll get you some. No, 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 no. We don't want you to get But we can get some. We're, yeah. We might be able to come up with them, make some copies. But it's great. I'm going to tell you, whether you have the sheet or not, uh, the scriptures that he gives, you, you can read them out of your Bible, and then he deals with the spiritual disciplines. And man, they're awesome. Nobody likes that word discipline. It is a good word. And it's the only way we're going to grow spiritually. Amen. Is to have discipline in our life. Right. Amen. Amen. And so go on there and watch them. Man, they're outstanding. Right. All the services were. Even the week Amen. of camp meeting and then the ones that follow. But let, hey, we're, we're starting. If the Lord tarries, uh, next year, September the 11th, uh, will be the starting of the uh, camp meeting. Uh, that will be on the Sunday. And uh, we're, this is what that offering goes to, to, to help with the expense of camp meeting. So you give, you pray about these offerings, you pray for the camp meeting. We don't know yet who's going to be preaching, but God does. And so we just need to get a hold of him. Amen? Amen. All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Brother Dwayne, would you pray for the offering, please? Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for another day. Thank you for allowing us to be in church. Yes. And I do thank you for the word that we heard from Brother Kenny in the Amen. last couple of weeks. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for that. Just pray now for this money that you use it, Lord, for the next camp meeting Amen. that I'm already looking forward to. Hallelujah. Pray that you pick the men of God that we need to hear. Yes, God. Amen. And we'll praise you and we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.
goodness and mercy. Praise His name. Appreciate the music tonight. Amen. Appreciate you giving. Appreciate your prayers for camp meeting. Open your Bibles, if you will, to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 tonight. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm going to preach and teach on something that we all probably are aware of, but uh, maybe not to the extent that we need to be. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Amen. Amen. Bobby, would you pick up, I think that's Daryl's pen right there, would you pick it up? Thank you, brother. <laughs> oh man, it's good to be in the church and you don't mind laughing. Hallelujah. For the Spirit of the Lord is there's liberty. Amen. I'm glad we have the freedom and the liberty here that God has blessed us with. First Corinthians chapter 12, you're there. I'd like to ask all who can and will to stand. Lee does have some copies of the uh, handouts that Kenny gave out. So if you need one of those to uh, go along with you while you watch on uh, social media, you can get those and it'll be a help to you. First Corinthians chapter 12, if you're there, say amen. 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 Verse 1, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away under these dumb idols even as you were led. And Paul really is saying there, you, you were carried away to these dumb idols that couldn't do anything for you. Right. Amen. Amen? Outside of Jesus Christ, and God the Father and the Holy Spirit, these other so-called gods and idols, they can't do a thing for us. Amen. Amen? Amen? He says, Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. And that, that goes along with how, what uh, a confession of salvation. The Bible says that if we believe that God raised Him from the dead and confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, thou shalt be saved. Amen. So this is confessing that Jesus Christ is Lord of your life. You can only say that by the Holy Ghost. As the Holy Ghost draws you and, and you're born of the Spirit, then you can say, hey, Jesus is Lord of my life. Amen? Amen. Uh, it goes on, he says, Now there are diversity of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Father, uh, help us tonight to uh, know... Uh, our part uh, and our, our responsibility within the body of Christ helps to understand that you have equipped us for uh, the work of the ministry and uh, Lord just uh, uh, grow the body of Christ tonight help us and grow in our knowledge of the gifts that you have given through the Holy Spirit and uh, how you uh, want to work through us through those gifts to build up your kingdom and to bring you glory God we love you Thank you for loving us. Thank you for all that you do for us. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, when I was thinking about this and preparing this, uh, felt like the Lord was leading in this way tonight. Uh, I got to thinking this might be a little bit late. I mean, this would this would be a good sermon that would have been preached or taught uh, prior to the ministry opportunity booklets going out. So. You know, I'm, I'm just going to trust that it's God's timing on this thing. It's not mine. And even though I might think it's a little bit late, uh, the thing about it is this is something that every born-again Christian needs to be aware of. And not just a surface knowledge of it. Not just to nod our heads and say, yeah, I've heard that before. Yeah, I know that's in the Bible. We need to have a deeper understanding of the spiritual gifts that God gives to us. And, and let me tell you now, and you've heard me say this, I, I don't know how many times over the last 21 years, uh, if you are a born-again Christian, you have at least one spiritual gift. Right. You probably have more than one, but you've got at least one spiritual gift. Based if the word of, what the Word of God says, if you're a Christian, then you have a gift of the Holy Ghost. And it's for the purpose of ministry, building up the kingdom of God, edifying the church, and to bring glory to Jesus Christ and God the Father. Amen? Amen? And so we need to have a good understanding of that. Now, over the years, I've heard Christians say things like this. I wish I knew what the Lord wanted me to do. I've heard that several times. 
I've heard this. I'm not sure what the, the Lord's will is for my life. I've heard that more times. And then I've heard Christians say, I just don't think God could use me. Well, I want to give you some things here that you can count on, that you can be certain of. God wants to use you to build His kingdom. If you are a child of God tonight, if you are a Christian, God wants to use you to build His kingdom, and you can be absolutely certain of that. God didn't save you to sit on a pew or a padded chair in church. Amen? Amen. And He did not give you a spiritual gift or gifts for you to sit back and not do anything to build His kingdom. That's right. So you can be certain of the fact that if you're a Christian, He wants to use you. Secondly, God's not hiding His will from us. He's God of light, and Him is no darkness at all. God doesn't hide anything from us concerning His will. He doesn't. He, he's a God of revelation. He wants us to know His good, acceptable, and perfect will. Right. Amen? Right. Amen? And the third thing is, the Lord can use you and will use you if you are a Christian because He has equipped you to be used. So we can be certain of those things. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 1, Paul starts out and he says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Now, we automatically get defensive when we feel like we're being called ignorant. <laughs> Amen. I don't know anybody wants to be called or likes to be called ignorant. Right? Amen. Do you agree with me? Yes. And Paul, he's not trying to be mean here. Even though it might sound a little harsh, he's not trying to be mean. He's trying to encourage the Christians in the churches there of Corinth, he's trying to encourage them to find out and to understand about the gifts that God has given to them. And the reason he wants them to understand that is because there's been some issues in the Corinthian church by the use of the gifts or the uh, attitudes when it came to the gifts, and they were causing division within the body of Christ. So we need to understand, we don't need to be ignorant of the spiritual gifts. The Word of God wants us to know about spiritual gifts. He wants us to understand what gifts we have and how He wants to use those. He wants us to know that. He wants us to understand that. But it also, that word ignorant there, contains in the meaning of it uh, to ignore. And so Paul was not only saying you need to understand, but you need to make sure that you don't ignore the fact that you have a gift. And I want to tell you something. I believe... I've taught on this before. I've preached on this before. And, and, and I know I can... Glenn's always talking about reading facial expressions and, and, and things like that. I, I, I don't know that I'm really good at it, but I, we talked about this today on the phone. Sometimes you preach to people and it's like, there's nobody home. Amen. There's just nobody there. It's just a shell sitting there, you know? You, you, and, and I believe that sometimes when you get to preaching and teaching about spiritual gifts, that, that people, Christian people now, hear that preaching and they hear that teaching and they sit there and they nod their heads. Yeah, I know that's right. I know that's in the Bible. I know that there's spiritual gifts. But then they just ignore the gifts. That's right. They just ignore the fact that they have spiritual gifts. Right. And let me tell you something. Paul is saying here, don't be ignorant. You need to understand this. Don't ignore it. It's important. Right. And the reason it's important is because it builds up the body of Christ, it builds up the kingdom of God, and it brings glory to the giver Amen. of the gifts. Amen? Amen. So, uh, we don't need to be eager of that. And, and, and then look at verses 4 through 7. He, he says this, he says, Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are differences of ministrations, but the same Lord, and there are diversities of operations, but it's the same God uh, which worketh uh, all in all. Now, I, just to kind of clarify that before we get into uh, how to understand things about these gifts, there are different gifts. There's not just one gift. It's not, we're not talking about the gift of eternal life here. There's only one of those. Amen? That's offered to whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord. But when it comes to spiritual gifts, there's different gifts. Gifts. There's only one Spirit, but that the Holy Spirit gives many different gifts unto men and women who have been born again. And if you want to know what some of those gifts are, you can you can find them right there in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. You go over to Romans chapter 12, and you, you can see some of the gifts. And I don't think it's an exhaustive list when you put them together. I don't think that's every gift. 
But I think that's a lot of the gifts that the Holy Spirit brings into the life of a believer. Amen? Amen. So there's different gifts. And then there, there's, there's different ways of serving with those gifts. You and I may have the same spiritual gift, but the way that the Lord uses you to serve with that gift may not be the way He uses me to serve with that gift. Amen? amen. Look, it, if you're not going to say amen, just nod your head real big or something. <laughs> Let me know you're getting this. Thank you, Jamie. I saw that. <laughs> yeah. So there's different gifts and there's different ways. Now, where the problem sometimes arises is that I think that if you have that gift, that you are to use it the same way I'm using it. And sometimes we can, well, wait a minute, I don't, I don't know if you're right. Well, who are we to judge another man's servant? That's right. Amen? Amen. Amen? There's different gifts and there's different ways of serving with those gifts. And, and we need to understand that. And another problem happens when we have the same gift as another person. And instead of seeking how the Lord wants us to use that gift, we see somebody else doing it and we just want to copy them. Amen. You and I are unique. Amen. 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 We're different from each other. Amen. We have different personalities. Amen. 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 We have different personalities. I started to say some people don't have any personality, but I, I, I'm not going to go there. But we're different. God made us this way. He created us this way. We've got different backgrounds. We've got a lot of different things make us unique, make us different. And God doesn't want all of us to be the same way. And He doesn't want us to, He doesn't want to work through us with these spiritual gifts in the same way. You can see that in the writers of the Bible. I mean, you think about all the different authors in the Bible, and they were all, man, you had fishermen, and you had shepherds, and you had, you, you, man, you had scholars, and, you, and, and God used the differences in them to record exactly what He wanted. But as you read it, you can see the different personalities of the writers. Amen. Well, God, is, it's the same way when it comes to the spiritual gifts. We're unique. God, wants, God, God works through me with, with the same gift that you may have, but He works through me and my personality the way that He made me, and He'll work through you in the way that He made you. Amen. Amen. So there's different gifts, and there's different ways of serving with those gifts, and then that brings about different results Amen. from those gifts. Amen. And again, sometimes that, that's a problem for us because we, we, we do uh, what we can with the gifts that God has given to us, and, and we get different results than somebody else, and sometimes it, it's a problem for us. Well, let me tell you something. It's not about the results. Right. It's about the obedience. That's right. Amen. It's Amen. about allowing God to use you with the gifts that He's imparted to you to bring Him glory. Amen. 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 And if God is glorified in one convert, or if God is glorified in, in a thousand converts, to God be the glory. Right. Amen. Amen. So, it, 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 it's the same God that worketh all in all. Regardless of the results, it's the same God. Same Holy Spirit, different gifts, different ways of serving, different results, but it's God that's working in all of them. Amen. Amen. So, I've got, I've got five principles tonight that I want to give to you about the spiritual gifts that we might get an understanding. We won't be ignorant of it and we won't ignore it, hopefully. Say amen. Amen. The first principle is the principle of desire. Desire. What desire has God put in your heart? Amen? If you, want to, if you want to begin to think about the spiritual gift that God may have imparted to you, and you know, God's not hiding anything from us, but He wants us to learn about these gifts, and He wants us to discover, to discover the gifts that He has put within us through the Holy Spirit. And so one of the ways we can begin to look at the desires that God has placed within our heart. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm just going to give you some personal experiences tonight uh, from my life. I'm not bragging or anything like that. I'm just telling you what God has done in my life as a Christian. But early on, me and Penny both realized that God had gave, given me an a unbelievable desire for the Word. I mean, I had never read the Bible. I'd never been in church. And then all of a sudden, God saves my soul, and I can't get enough of the Bible. Amen. 
And, and, and to go along with that, he was giving me some understanding that as I was reading it. I remember Penny, she, she said she kind of got, it got, kind of bothered her a little bit. She'd been saved since she was 14 years old. Now, she hadn't always done what she was supposed to do. And she'd gotten out of church and things like that. But she'd been saved since she was 14 years old. And I'd been saved four days. And all of a sudden, I would say, hey, Penny, did you know this? Uh, I, really? <laughs> and it was beginning to bother her. <clears throat> But, but God put that desire in my heart. And, and we didn't know at the beginning why God was doing it. We just realized that He had put that desire there. Amen? Amen. And so you've got to be sensitive to the desires that you have for spiritual things. Let me tell you something. If you've got a desire for spiritual things, it's not coming up by the flesh. No. Right. Amen. You've got to realize that's God at work. Right. If you've got a desire for something spiritual, that's the Lord at work. And out of those desires that God put within my heart came a desire to teach, and then a desire to preach, and then a desire to pastor. Go over to 1 Timothy 3. 1 Timothy 3. Hurry up. 1 Timothy 3. 3. 3. You there? 1 Timothy 3. I got to get there. 1 Timothy 3. Yeah, you might come there. This is a true saying, Paul says, if a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. So God puts a desire in a man's heart to be a bishop. Amen? Mm -hmm. he, puts a, he puts that desire. Now we talk about a call to preach and things like that. Let me tell you what a call to preach is. It's realizing that God has put, given you a desire. Amen? Amen? And so we say, oh, I've been called to preach. Well, maybe we were to say God put the desire there. And that's what he did. And he gave me a desire to be a bishop or a pastor. That's, oh, boy. Don't call me bishop. Don't call me angel. A bishop is a pastor. And he gave me that desire. And let me tell you something. I didn't, I didn't, that really wasn't confirmed in my life until after I had pastored my first church. Right. I, I was, man, I was, you know what God did for me when he saved me? He just put a big old yes in my heart. Yeah. <laughs> my preacher came up to me right after he got saved. He said, you going to come to Sunday school next Sunday? Yes. <laughs> Wasn't too many months after that, he said, you want to teach teen Sunday school class? Yes. <laughs> Well, long after that, he called to me. He said, you want to serve on the church board? Yes. <laughs> About a year after that, he called to me. He said, you want to be our youth pastor? I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> God opened the door for me to pastor the first church. People said, hey, we want you to come and be our pastor. Yes. <laughs> but after four and a half years of pastoring, not knowing what I was doing, just trusting God. The honeymoon was over after about three years. And the last year and a half, it was a fight every day. I'll never forget my last Sunday there. We had a board meeting. And I had a man get in my face about this close, blood red in the face, just right there. He said, you're leading this church astray. I said, how's that? By what you're preaching. I said, tell me something I've preached that's not in the Word of God. I said, that's it. I'm done. I resigned. Two weeks later, it was my last Sunday. I got in the car, Brother Jamie, and I felt like I weighed 75 pounds. <laughs> Everything was off of me, buddy. And I thought, oh, this is I'll never do that again. That's what I said. I told my wife, that's it. We're not doing that again. And that went on for about three or four months. I was just as happy as a bug in a rug. And then it started coming back. What does Jeremiah say? I'm not going to talk about him no more. I'm not going to preach about him no more. And he said, then there was a burning in his bones. Yeah. All of a sudden, I got a burning desire in my heart. Not just to preach, not just to teach, but to be an overseer, to be a shepherd of a flock. God put that there. 
I love y'all, but nobody in their right mind would want to be a pastor. <laughs> it has to be of God. Yeah. And it wasn't long. I got a call. A singing group that's been here many times, the Bradleys, New Salem, they call it themselves now. They had gone to a church up in Tyro and were singing, and they didn't have a pastor up there. And they said, oh, well, we know a guy. <laughs> so he called, the guy called me up, and he said, hey, you want to come preach? <laughs> but that's the way it is. God puts these desires in our heart. We have to pay attention to that. Right. Amen? Amen? Because that is the way we, God helps us to, to, to discover the, the gifts. That, that takes us up to the next thing. But, but let me ask you something before we move on to the next one. What desire is in your heart? I'm just sharing with you the desire that God's placed in my heart. What's the desire that He has put in your heart? No, please don't sit there and say, well, I don't think I've got one. Yes, you do. But you've ignored it. You maybe you like me sometimes. You hope it goes away. <laughs> well, if it's of God, it don't go away. He's persistent. So what desires in your heart? If you're a Christian, God wants to use you. He's equipped you, and He helps you to understand that by placing desires in your heart. Everybody say, I, "You got that?" Amen. The next principle is the principle of detection. Detection. We discover our gifts as we use them. Amen. I pastored four and a half years before I realized that the desire in my heart was to pastor. Amen. And as we use those gifts, we become more certain. We, we, we become, if you will, we become less ignorant. As we use our gifts and we react to the desires that God has put in our heart. One of the things that the Lord did for me after He saved me was, was that big yes, and, and, and I, it just kept me going through the doors. And that, that's where we need to be. God, if you've got that desire in my heart, I'm going to trust you to open up the doors. I'm going to trust you to get, hey, that, you got these ministry opportunity books back there? That's a great way for you to say, you know what? This is the desire that's been on my heart. I'm going to try this. Yes. I'm, going, I'm going to see how God's going to use that. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Man, people, people will confirm. As you use your gifts, people will confirm. Now, don't believe everything you hear. <laughs> Me and Pitty talk sometimes, back when American Idol was so popular, who told them people they could sing? <laughs> don't believe everything you hear. Amen. Amen. But every now and listen, every now and somebody might come up to you and say, man, you know what? You are so organized. Well, that may be confirmation that you have the gift of administration. That's, that's a gift. That you can organize things. That you, can, you, you have a gift of administration. That, that's one of the things that pastors need to have is a gift of administration. If not, they need a really good wife. <laughs> Amen? Amen? I think maybe it might be opposite for me and Penny. I don't know. <laughs> Y'all ever look at her pocketbook or her car? I don't know if she ever has the gift of administration, right? Huh? Well, I'll take that back. You know what? She knows exactly where everything is in that bank. I can't find a thing. Except for rotten apple every now and then. Or pizza gold. <laughs> maybe somebody comes up to you and say, you know what? You're so patient with those children. That might be confirmation that you have the gift of mercy. That you haven't killed them. <laughs> no, I'm just big. Mercy is patience. Isn't God merciful to us? Yeah. Isn't He patient with us? Yeah. Somebody says, hey, you do a great job. Hey, Brother Jerry, you do a great job taking care of making sure the garbage cans are empty around here. You know what that's a confirmation of? That's a confirmation of a servant's heart. Yes, they got the gift of serving. And so along with the desires, God will, will confirm it. And He does it in that way. Amen? So let me, let me go on to the next one. The, the principle of development. We develop our gifts by using them and studying them and working at them. Now let me tell you something. I, I, and, and there again, I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you what God's worked out in my life. But I, I think, you may have a whole different opinion about it, but I feel like I'm now in my Christian walk, I feel like I'm a pretty good leader. Amen. amen. Boy, that was, that was a great time for amen right there. <laughs> but you know why? 
I feel like I'm a pretty good leader. I have gone through every leadership class that Glenn Brooks has ever taught, and I'm going to tell you right now, he has taught a bunch of them. Yeah. I've gone through his classes on leadership. I've read books on leadership. He's recommended books on leadership. I've read those. I've studied those. I've watched sermon uh, 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 videos on leadership. I've listened to sermons on leadership. Hey, hey you got hey. You're, you've got a desire in your heart. I want to be a good leader. I want to be a good pastor. A good pastor has to be a good leader. And I'm going to tell you something. You've got to study that. You've got to prepare yourself for that. And whatever your gift is, you study it. You, you, you learn about it. Amen. You develop that gift. It's amazing that we understand that principle in every aspect of our life except spiritual. Amen. You get better on your job by doing it. You get better on your job by learning it. We, when, I, when I first started upholstering at Clouster Furniture, we had a trainer down there. His, his name was Tiny. He was not Tiny. But he was a great trainer. And he would, he would show you how to do something and he would let you do it and then he would, he would show you again and then he would let you do it. And, and I'm sitting over there saying, okay, I got it, I'm ready, I got it. No, you got to do it this way. And I, I know, I understand, I got it, but let's do that again tomorrow now. Let's go through that. And, and folks, let me tell you something right now. You, you, it's, we, we understand that in the physical world or the secular world, but we, for some reason we don't understand that when it comes to spiritual things. Amen. Right. right. We gotta be trained. We gotta be taught. We gotta we gotta learn. We gotta study it. Amen. 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 Preachers and pastors and teachers, you got that desire and you believe you have that gift. Don't stop there. Learn how to grow. Watch lessons on teaching. Watch listen, watch guys preach. Listen to how they preach. Those are the good things that help us to understand the gift that God has given to us. Amen. Once we've discovered our gifts, we need to develop our gifts through prayer, through study, through trial and error. Yeah. <laughs> That's the hard part. Yeah. The trial and error. Test the waters. Right? Amen. See if the shoe fits. Amen. And if it doesn't, then quit. Stop. Go back to them people on American Idol. Don't sing no more. That's not you. You know, sometimes we think that we can't change our mind. Sometimes we think that we can't say, oh, wait a minute, I made a mistake. I tell you right now, David in the Bible would have been a whole lot better off if at times he would have said, wait a minute, <laughs> I don't need to do that. Amen? I don't need to take that census. Right? I don't need to stay home when everybody else is fighting. Right. He'd have been a whole lot better off if he'd have changed his mind on that kind of stuff. And sometimes we, hey, we, we, I believe i got a desire to do that. And you get in the midst of it and you think, oh my word, what in the world am I doing here? Then back out. It's okay. Maybe that's not your gift. Right. Amen. Y'all good? Amen. So we've got, to, we've got to develop. We've got to remember these are spiritual gifts. Amen? These are spiritual gifts. These are not natural talents. Amen. There's a difference. There's a lot of people with talent. But it's not led of the Spirit. Say, so, amen. amen. So the next thing is the principle of dependence. Look at chapter 12, uh, uh, chapter 12 there, 1 Corinthians, right quick. Chapter 12, verse 7. It says, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. These are spiritual gifts. I'm going to tell you something. Talents are wonderful, and they ought to be used to, to, to uh, minister to the body of Christ. But when it comes to spiritual gifts, folks, we have to realize that, that we don't pick them. I've always wanted to play guitar. I've always wanted to play something. Right? Yeah. What's the old saying? I can't even play, I, I can't even get the station on the radio. <laughs> I've always wanted to play something, but I've never had enough gumption to stick with it. I tried the guitar one time. Man, my fingers got some soul. You gotta go through this to play the guitar? Forget it. Right? We can pick out a talent. We can try a talent. We can 
try to play the piano or play the guitar. It's not that way with spiritual gifts. We don't pick them. We don't pick them. It's the Holy Spirit that gives them to us and, and He selects it. We don't. He gives it. He empowers us with it. You know, in the charismatic church, you hear a lot about the gift of tongues. I've been to charismatic churches. I was invited to come to some of them in a revival service and to preach. All he preached on was the gift of tongues the whole time. You need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit with the initial manifestation of this speaking in tongues. And Man, I, I was sitting out there and I wasn't getting it. But I'm going to tell you something. We don't select the gift of tongues. He said, Preacher, you believe in the gift of tongues? I believe in the gift of tongues. I don't think I need to speak in Italian right now. Amen. Right? Amen. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Yes. Then I don't think God would manifest the gift of tongues. Amen. But I believe I was over on the mission field and God had somebody over there, some, some Nigerian or somebody, whatever, and, and, and I needed to share, God wanted me to share the gospel with them. I believe I could share the gospel. Now get this, I believe I could share the gospel just as clear as what I'm saying right now and they would hear it in their own language just like on the day of Pentecost. Amen. I believe in the gift of tongues. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you have it, God gave it to you. The Holy Spirit gave it to you. You don't have it because you prayed for it. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, it, it, the dependence has got to be on the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something. These spiritual gifts, you've got you to gotta operate in faith with these spiritual gifts. The flesh will say, oh, you can't do that, you can't do that, you can't do that. And if you listen to the to the flesh, you won't. You got it. Brother Kenny has been talking about opposition, all, all, all this stuff. On every time we want to do something spiritual, there's opposition, right? Yeah. If you want, if you want to operate that that gift that God has given to you, you're going to have to take a step of faith. Let me tell you something. In 2000, I knew, I knew by that time, 2000. I've been saved in 1988, been preaching since 1991, been preaching for nine years. I knew I had the gifts of the pastor. I knew I had certain gifts. But buddy, I'm going to tell you one day, when God began to move on our heart, my heart about starting a church, I knew I had the gifts of the pastor, but I, well, wait a minute, I don't know about this planting church stuff. I don't know about this starting church stuff. But you know what had to happen? You have to take a step of faith. God's equipped you. Amen. He's equipped. How many of you know that? He's equipped you, but you've got to take that step of faith and say, you know what? I'm, I'm going to do it by the grace of God. Amen. He's given me this desire. I'm pretty sure I've got that gift, so I've got to take that step of faith. It's the dependence upon the Holy Spirit. And then finally, the principle of development. Development. Look back over there in chapter 12. We're going to go past what we read. I want you to go over to verse 18. But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it pleased Him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestowed more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked, that there should be no schisms in the body, no division in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. One member be honored, and all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. This is the, the, the principle of deployment. Every one of us that are born again believers are a member of the body of Christ. Now listen, when Jesus was walking this earth, he had a physical body here. He's not here any longer in a physical body. But he is here in the body of Christ, the church. Amen. Paul right here is using the analogy of a human body. Right? Everybody get that? He's using the analogy of a human body. So let me just ask you something. If we're going to look at it that way, let's look at our organs as members of the body. Okay? 
What happens if the heart member of the body decides, I'm just going to ignore my responsibility. You die. See, that's pretty severe. Well, let's just say, what about your right leg? All of a sudden, one day, Brother Bobby, your right leg just decided it's going to go to live. Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine? Bobby's a fireman. Could you imagine him trying, trying to operate with a leg that just decided it didn't want to work? How hard would it be? How difficult, would, how productive would he be as a fireman? Talk to me. How productive would he be? Would you want him trying to get to your house with the fire out? I mean, we laugh about that. That's a ridiculous example. But what about the body of Christ? We are all members of the body. Amen. If we just say, I'm just going to ignore the spiritual gift stuff. How effective are we going to be? <coughs> how productive are we going to be? I mean, when you've got a church that runs 160, 170 people and you've got... 85 of them that say, I don't care about them spiritual gifts. I know I've got them, but I ain't going to worry about it. We're dragging them around. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's right. We've got, to, we've got to deploy the gifts so the body can do what God intends for it to do. Amen. Hey, hey, chapter 12, verse 12. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many, many are one body, so also is Christ. The work of Christ is done by the members of the body. And if the members of the body are ignorant about spiritual gifts, they're ignoring their spiritual gifts. They don't care. They don't study. They don't try to find out what they are. They ignore the desires that God has put on their heart. Then what, what does that say about the body of Christ in the world today? So we'd have a whole lot of fun talking about these spiritual gifts, but buddy, when it really comes down to it, it says that God has given the gifts to profit with all. Amen. So let's just, let's talk about profit. We don't like to talk about profit. What is the body of Christ profiting from you? You've been given gifts to profit with all. So what, what's the body of Christ profiting for me and you? Amen? Well, that's where the rubber meets the road. Mm -hmm. If you're a born-again Christian, you got gifts. If you don't know what they are, don't ignore them. Seek God. Search your heart. Let the Holy Spirit search your heart and see what the desire is that God has put within your heart. Amen? Amen. Stand with me. It's about a nice clothes. You can pray a little bit there for going. Use your gift or talent, maybe. Talent. Heads about a nice clothes. Just a little talk with Jesus tonight. God, how, how have you equipped me? What has the Holy Spirit put within me to build your kingdom? What has he put within me to bring glory to you? God, how do you want to use me and use those spiritual gifts through my life? Would you ask God that tonight? Lord, I'm already serving you. But is there more I could do? More that you've equipped me to do? God, I know I'm young. But I don't see any age requirements when it comes to spiritual gifts. I'm saved, I'm young. And I realize tonight that You've equipped me to do 
your service. Help me to know what that is. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the body of Christ, how you've put it together. Thank you for the way that you have put Hope Baptist Church together. Thank you for the folks that are serving. Thank you for the folks that are allowing you to work through them with the spiritual gifts that you've placed in their life. And Father, I, I, God, don't let this be condemning tonight. May it be encouraging to all of us to seek after you, to, to, to search our hearts in the light of the Word of God, to be sensitive to the work of the Holy Spirit in our life that we might know what those desires are that you've put in our hearts, that we might uh, discover the spiritual gifts and that we might use them to build your kingdom and to bring you glory. Father, we love you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for being patient with us. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for answering prayer. God, it's good to hear them about the answers to prayer. We thank you for that. And God, just go with us. God, direct our step. Help us to be a good witness for you. And we'll thank you and praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you.